pasal namin ay si Yumi yung humarap sa amin. Dahil nakita niya na may parang nakala namin. At doon ko din na-realize mga kapagod na hindi pa rin pala ako doon din nakamove on sa kanya. Dahil isang buwan lang ang bakasyon namin sa Pilipinas ay pinadali na namin ang regulasyon na ang pasal. Kaya may mga lakad kami ni Marie na magpinwalay para mas mapabilis na yun. Hindi ko naman nakalain na sa akin niya ay pagkakatiwala doon ng pag-aasikaso ng mga souvenir namin. Ibig sabihin noon ay hinayaan niya lamang ako na makipag-usap kay Yumi. Medyo kinabahan ako ng sandaling yon dahil wala sa tabi ko si Marie. Hindi ko alam kung sinadya niya na magpuntahin ako noon para sukatin yung loyalty ko sa kanya. O nagawa niya yon kasi malaki talaga ang tiwala niyo sa akin. Ngunit kahit na anong iwas ko papadudod ay hindi ako nilubayan ng tukso. Dito tayo sa bahay nagkita. Nagka-problema kasi din sa stall ko. Okay lang. Walang problema. Nga pala. Ito yung samples ng mga potted plants for soup. Hala? Ako, sorry. Puro sulat na itong paper pa. Kasi nagkata na anak mo. Mukha. Napakakulit kasi noon. Four years old na. Naibig ko kasi itong paper bag dito kanina eh. Yun ba yung konsum mo? Oo. Oo. Thank you. 
Nazis. I had five. Nagplano na rin kami para sa church wedding papadudo. Pero sa hindi naasahang pagkakataon na ang puntahan namin, yung gagawa ng souvenirs para sa kasal namin ay si Yumi yung humarap sa amin. Dahil nakita na rin naman ni Marie, yung mga picture noon ni Yumi ay agad niya rin po itong nakilala. Sobrang awkward po ng sandaling yon papadudo. Pero noong banggitin ni Yumi, Everyone says Egypt is extremely difficult.
Tapos yun sa ano? Tapos yung maling taliano na, no? Ang mas malala ba ay hindi lang isang beses Ang labas ng liano Di ba, ano? Ano? Di ba? Nang nasundan ng makailang beses Ito yung pangawin natin, sports complex na Sa bawat sandali na nagtataksil kami ni Marie Kay Marie Ay pabigat ng pabigat Ang nararamdaman Kasama si Yumi Kaya bago pa matuloy Ang kasal namin ni Marie ay Inarap ko na yung pinakamahirap na desisyon ginawa ko sa tanang buhay ko, Papa Dudu. Eh, 
Ano nga na to? Rolo na to pa? Dito pa rin na to? Dahil 
mas matagal kami naging LDR. Samantalang si Marie ay talagang nakasama ko sa Dubai at nakilala na namin ng mabuti ang isa't isa. Kaya umabot na rin ang pitong taon ng relasyon namin. Hindi ko tuloy <coughs> maiwasa ikumpara si Jimmy. Sa araw-araw kasi magkasama kami ay napapansin ko na hindi talaga compatible ang ugali naming dalawa. Pero dahil tumanda na rin ako ay napagod na rin po ako papadudo. Kaya tinanggap ko na lamang ang lahat. Mahal ko rin naman si Yumi at siya yung pinili kong makasama kaya iniwasan ko na lamang ang isip ng kumano-ano. Sa ngayon ay pinantingan ko na lamang ang naging desisyon ko at uh, hinarap lahat ng consequences na mga nagawa ko. Hanggang dito na... Hanggang dito na lamang po ang aking kwento. Maraming salamat po sa Barangay LS. Dahil nabigyan ang pagkakataon na may share ang kwento ng buhay at pag-ibig ko. Sana po ay kapulutan po ito ng aral ng ating mga tagapakinig. Maraming maraming salamat po and more power sa time, love stories, at sa programa ninyo sa Barangay LS. Ang inyo po so... Jojo. church wedding papadudo. Pero sa hindi naasahang pagkakataon ng puntahan namin yung gagawa ng souvenirs para sa kasal namin ay si Yumi yung humarap sa amin. Dahil nakita na rin naman ni Marie yung mga picture noon ni Yumi ay agad niya rin po itong nakilala. Sobrang awkward po ng sandaling yon papadudod pero noong banggitin ni Yumi nakasal na siya at may dalawang anak na rin ay naramdaman po na biglang nagbago ang tono at pakikitungo ni Marie Rito. Para bang mas naging kampante na siya. Ngunit ang hindi niya alam ay parang lumukso yung puso ko nung muli ako. Muli kaming magtagpo ni Yumi matapos ang anim na taon. Tila biglang nanumbalik ang lahat ng mga ala-ala namin. At doon ko din na-realize papadudot na hindi pa rin pala ako totally nakamove on sa kanya. Dahil isang buwan lang ang bakasyon namin sa Pilipinas ay minadali na namin ang rekasyon ng kasama. Kaya may pangalagad kami ni Marie na magpipalay para mas mapagbilis na yun. Hindi ko naman nakalain na sa akin niya ay pagkakatiwala noon ang pag-aasikaso ng mga souvenir namin. Ibig sabihin noon, oh, may pag-usap kay Yumi. Medyo kinabahan ako ng sandali yun. The animated explainer videos are the best way to capture hindi ko alam kung sinadya niya na magpuntahin ako roon para sukatin yung loyalty ko sa kanya. O nagawa niya yun kasi malaki talaga ang tiwala niyo sa akin. Ngunit kahit na anong iwas ko papadudod ay hindi ako nilubayan ng tukso.
more followers and drive more sales. They're engaging to. I am Dylan Jordan. I would say worse of the two creators, but still a creator. Dylan's also being humble. Like he is the kind of guy who will go and live under a rock and figure out the viral formula. And he is the reason our content popped off. Meet Dylan and Henry, two creators who went from sleeping on the floor of their apartment. We were trying to make a podcast. Nobody was listening to it to making viral shorts through the power of storytelling. My first short that was story driven did 30 million views. Their videos even got the attention of icons such as Will Smith and Tim Ferriss. Will Smith and his team, they had seen our Naval video and Naval had seen our Tim Ferriss video. And Tim Ferriss had seen our My First Million podcast video. All thanks to their refreshing perspective on being a creator. We don't make movies to make money. We make money to make movies. And all of that led to? In the first year of making content, we went from zero subscribers subscribers to 2 million subscribers and 1 billion views. How did you do it? Dylan went monk mode and he was like, Henry, I'm just going to go figure it out. And what he came back with four weeks later was, he's like, dude, like, I think if we're going to crack something, we should A, take advantage of short form because that's where all the discoverability is. And then B, like, let's take a lesson from Mr. Beast, which is all about retention, retention, retention. And oh, if we're going to get really good at retention, like what's the best way I know to do that? Well, it's to tell stories. It's in your 60 second short, just tell a story. Before he came up with that insight, I was doing these like abstract, like YouTube shorts about book quotes, thinking people cared about me. They don't. Like the day Dylan had me switch over to these story driven shorts, immediately things took off. My first short that was story driven did 30 million views. So that was Dylan's big insight. It was literally like this short had 3000. And then the short after learning, hey, how about you just tell a story? 30 million. So it was like just night and day the difference i had a script i was in dylan's apartment i was just cranking on a script i was like dude you gotta read this thing like i'm stoked on it it was my first clip about mcdonald's he comes over my shoulder he takes a look and he's like dude what is this this is garbage erase everything imagine we're sitting in a bar we're drinking a beer and just explain the story to me like we're two friends. I tweaked the whole thing and it, it just went crazy. In addition to stories, your shorts have a very cool format. How did you find it? So how I had that original breakthrough, it wasn't anything novel that I came up with. I just, actually, I think Henry originally found this channel. He's like, dude, check out this thing on TikTok called Big Weird World. And it was like these one or two kids that were pretty much like our age and all they did was just pull up a green screen behind them. And then they had animations, like kind of funny animations in the background telling history stories. I'm like, Dan, that's a really sick format. I don't see that on YouTube. I don't on YouTube. Like, can we just take that same format and just absolutely blow this up? And the nice thing is it, it worked because it was already proven on TikTok. And how do you find viral worthy content? How do you know what to invest your time in, in terms of scripting, shooting, and editing? Similar to finding that format and remixing it for YouTube, we were like, let's just take already long form content, 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute videos that have millions of views. That's a blueprint to my value. We've already done it. So can we just tweak and remix and retell that story in 60 seconds? Don't reinvent the wheel. The other thing I think is like Dylan and I will just be scrolling through Twitter and you either see a blog post with a lot of likes or you see a little psychological hack or you see a little history story. And my thought is always, wow, if that hooked me, if I'm here like reading this longer thing now, there's got to be like a thousand other people like me, 10,000 other people. That's kind of our general approach. But then it's like, figure out exactly what hooked you. Maybe it's a video of an armadillo just crossing the road. And it's like, wow, that video is really interesting because like I didn't expect the armadillo to like roll that way. Just figure out like what hooked you and that's what you're going to use as your hook. So I would just take that now armadillo video and just like put that at the very start of your video and be like, Look how crazy it is this armadillo is bowling across the road. Do you have a system for finding a lot of good ideas? Yeah, so in terms of finding a lot of content ideas, I think it's just that switch in your mind, which is like, I'm looking for ideas now. You don't just like sit on the couch and try and write down ideas. You just go about your day. And in conversation, someone says, well, why does this work the way it does? I don't know. Let me Google it. Oh, okay. There's an idea. Or when you've got that switch turned, you start watching YouTube videos. It's like, what, what interests me? Did that thing go viral? Yes, it did. Okay. Can I retell it? So I think you make the switch. You just say like, I'm going into idea mode, create a note in your phone, label it my ideas, and then just go about your life. And as you see them pop up serendipitously out of life, write them down. It's near impossible to sit down and try and just come up with them and then just refer back to your list and you've probably got a thousand things that would work i don't know our, our issue has never been searching for ideas day of it's like filtering this list of 100 ideas which one do we want to shoot today so how do you filter down the list right with all these videos we know they have viral potential they already got our attention so now it's just like 
Okay, which one do I want to tell today? It's pretty easy. It's like, oh, today I want to talk about how sweet green makes money because I just ate a sweet green. As artists, you need deadlines. If you have that massive list, you need to say, hey, I got to get something out in 60 minutes because without even artificial deadlines, like you'll just be scrolling through the list forever. Make a deadline, write the thing, get it done. Where does niche fit into all of this? We never focus on a niche. Like we tell uh, a short about like the difference between zebras and horses and then the next short would be like, how does Costco make money? Like very little overlap. There was just like enough traction. Like we didn't care if one was a million views and one was a hundred thousand. It's like roughly people are finding this interesting. And after that, I checked out of looking at stats altogether. Overall, once a month, maybe I'll check in and be like, okay. Whether you need it or not, I highly recommend that you bring this vacuum cleaner back with you. This vacuum cleaner is cordless and portable. 65,000 pounds of suction power. It can easily clean. The views are at like 40 million this month or 20 million this month. I don't change really much beyond that. I just go whatever's interesting to me. I'm sure like Henry said there. We were trying to focus on Just like, I need to grab this. There on the top of the best as I can. Is that? Broad appeal clips and, and just kind of tasting what we were doing. We see a lot of creators make the mistake of focusing on the extrinsic stuff like views and subscribers. What else do you do to most new creators? The problem with content creation in general is everyone's trying to just be a better version of what they're already seeing. And that just never works because you're going to be like 10% better, but that's not enough to really crack through. You have to be 10 times better, not 10%. It's like, okay, how do you be 10 times better? Well, it's going to look like nothing you've seen before on YouTube. Particularly, we hadn't seen people spend three days to a week animating a short for 60 seconds telling history box and then when we smash these six formats together guess what we're the only people doing johnny harris box casey neistat big weird world south park you know like all in one so i think finding formats that already work or even like old formats that worked in the past and then remixing them is, is a great place to start aside from a unique format are there other ways new creators can stand out what's nice about our style with the green screen pull up it's like we almost have that now patented on youtube like it's just like our thing and the nice thing is it is in the first three seconds we're gonna have something recognizable where you see this green screen and us on screen pulling it up it's like okay that's a good video i've seen a million videos like this before they clearly work so that's where i really invest my Form, you gotta figure out like is the title good, is the thumbnail good? Oh, I just spent two weeks on this and it's gotta work. Versus a short is like, hey, I'm gonna put out a short today and a short in three days. It's like I'm just pumping out content. So like if this doesn't work, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna keep doing what I like. So there's just a lot less pressure, especially when you're starting out. And these short form platforms are like the ultimate rewarder of just good video or good story. Thumbnail doesn't matter, hashtags don't matter, titles doesn't matter, description doesn't matter, none of that matters. It's just like made the story. You and I were both iteration, not revision. So we're trying, especially with short form, it's just like, hey, awesome. I think we could tweak this going forward, but let's just publish this. So we really excited about being published. And now the next version, we're going to apply this new concept that maybe we, we missed in the last one. We're okay publishing content that's good enough. It's still very high quality, but it's good enough just to like keep that inspiration, the, the passion moving forward. And Henry and I, we look back at our videos from a year ago and like, we can't physically watch them. Like, we're to creators who are 
perfectionists. He became across. at 80 to 100. Let's move out a couple of philosophies. What's the other one? This was another framework we were lucky enough to find at the time. I forget who it came from, but it was just relish in the obscurity. Nobody cares about you right now. Nobody's watching your stuff, which is beautiful because you can just create and create and create and learn and tinker and tweak things and get 1% better each time while nobody's watching. Relish in that obscurity. Do you have an example of where you tried to get 1% better each time, but still didn't get views? I shot like 200 daily vlogs and nobody was watching them. But what I realized is if you just do that, do it for a long time. When the thing you're exploring, the topic you're exploring, the idea you're exploring, when it just feels like play, when it feels like it's that thing that you could do for 18 hours a day and like you don't stop to look at your clock once, then like burnout's never even a question. That's a really healthy way of looking at things. Any final words? I just think like there are two big concepts with how we create. Create for yourself and then be the best at that. So basically be your own favorite creator. I think that's just what we've done. It just makes the creation process one and it gives me a I'm going to show you step by step how to get more views with vidIQ. I'm going to show you all the tools and the different features that I use to get more views even if I'm starting a channel from zero. This video is not sponsored by vidIQ. which we'll talk more about later. Now, if you haven't installed VidIQ yet, there is a link down below. You can use it completely free, but if you're really serious about this stuff, there is a more advanced paid version. I'll leave a link down below to my page where you can get VidIQ for a whole month for just $1 full premium version, and you'll also be supporting this channel. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Now, when you actually go to VidIQ and open it up, go to The rough market in which your channel exists and try to summarize it in as few words as possible. So for this channel you're watching right now, which is a YouTube education channel, that word might just be YouTube. I'm going to use another example here. Let's say we're like a mid-journey tutorial channel. Mid-journey is like AI image generator for those who don't know. And my single word that encapsulates the mid-journey topic would probably just be well, mid journey. Duh. Now we call this very stripped back bare bones term your root keyword. That's gonna help us find the 
Go to YouTube and type in mid journey. Now you could do this in incognito mode to make sure your results are going up. But I can just see here, if we scroll through here, it's true that there aren't a huge amount of very, very large creators making journey videos relative to say other niches where many channels would have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers. But there's definitely plenty of creators making it like that one. Is I'm going to sort by competition, lowest to highest. Now, if I go through here, we can see that this is looking a little bit better. Now, sure, our search volume here is much less, but our competition is much lower. So low, in fact, for some of these terms that vidIQ can't even give us a score. Now, I'm just going to start at the top here and work my way through these keywords. And what I'm looking for is an interesting keyword that I think I might be able to put. people a month searching for it. However, when Ooh. I enter Mid Journey Modern Shield into YouTube, I get approximately zero videos showing up for Mid Journey Modern Shields of any description. YouTube's like, hey, there are people looking for this, but I don't have any videos on this. So I'm just going to show you some vaguely related YouTube short instead and hope that you click in there and then get lost in a scroll of death. <laughs> so if we can create a Mid Journey Modern Shield tutorial video, assuming we do a good job of optimizing it, like I'll show you how to do in a second, Chances are roughly 2,000 people. Not bad for a chance coming up to zero. This is the journey. I'm going to show you how to get to this video. Coach. And this is basically like ChatGPT, but specifically it's been trained on YouTube data. And we have two options here. We have basic and advanced. Basic is pretty much just the generic ChatGPT for YouTubers. Advanced actually accesses your channel data and bears it in mind when it's giving you answers. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the basic version of the AI coach. Reason being is that if I use the advanced version, it's probably going to get a bit confused because my my channel is about YouTube. But if you have a mid journey channel in the advanced section, you'll probably get even better results. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the following prompt into this chat. So you can just pause the video here and copy down this prompt. And here, when I say improve this tile to make it more clickable, I'm just going to freestyle the most basic version of the video idea that we just discovered in the keyword planner. So maybe something like how to generate a modern shield image in mid journey. Now what I'm gonna do is come down to this ladder section and I'm gonna oh. import the specific keyword that we just discovered because we wanna make sure that the tiles it generates for us include that keyword. Hey, I'm Kayla, and I'm one of the AI voices for Revoicer. 
I can be sad, and you'll think that I might break down and cry any moment. Or get excited about all... Have you ever wondered what really happens when you go full-time on YouTube or when you make the leap to become a full-time content creator, influencer, whatever you'd prefer to call this line of work? That has been my reality for the last four months and today we're going to dive into my journey of basically being a full-time YouTuber. The ups, the downs, and everything in between is what we're going to get into in this video. If you're new to this channel, Dude, four, hi, five, I'm Celine. Eight. On this channel, I share life in my 20s, productivity, self-improvement, Improvement and a lot of my content journey. So if you're into that sort of thing, uh, consider subscribing and checking out my other videos. To give you some more background, four months ago, I basically decided to quit my job without another job lined up. The reason I made that decision was for a bunch of different factors outside of YouTube. And I actually made a video talking all about that, which I will link in the description. I wanted to bring that up to be clear that I didn't quit my job to become a YouTuber. It was more so that I had taken the opportunity to not work for a while, take a break, do things that fill my cup, and around that same time, a couple of videos had blown up on my channel and I was experiencing the most growth that I ever had. So I found myself really drawn to the idea of using the time when I didn't have a 9 to 5 job and really embracing this mindset of being a full-time creator and seeing what it would be like. And here we are today, four months later. I want to be as open and transparent about all of this with you guys, but also know that everyone's journey is different and I have received a few comments comments from you guys asking for my perspective or any advice on whether you should do this full time and all I can say is this is a very personal decision. There are so many factors to consider which I will dive into as I go through this video but the main thing I hope for is that this can give you some thought starters and ideas of things to consider while you're making the decision that's right for you. First, the reality of content creation. Four months ago, I had this idea in my head that because I no longer had a job, which was consuming about 40 plus, 44 plus hours of my life, that I had all this time in the world now and I would be pumping out videos left and right. At this point, I was uploading one long form video a week for over a year and each video typically takes me between 15 to 20 hours. And I was doing that on top of a job. So in my head, I was thinking, if I can already do one video and I'm working, then now that I have all this time, I'm going to have to make videos. But the reality of the time different mindset is what I came to realize. I'm trying to properly frame this but just even thinking about the mindset that I would be in while I had a job working through the day but also being so excited about finishing work and getting to work on my video getting to edit. I think that type of excitement comes because there's something else that we have to do or something else that's consuming our day and then YouTube was something that I was excited about and looking forward to that was outside of that and don't get me wrong I still really love making videos that hasn't changed at all but that originally that I was going to suddenly consume all my waking hours making videos was not realistic that can lead to burnout all the same patterns that you can have when you're hey, oh no. hey I noticed you checked out speechlow a few days ago please continue watching and I promise you will be amazed how cool would it be to just enter your text and generate a these shorts generated over 500 million views. So today I'm gonna start a similar channel only using AI. From editing, doing titles, and the channel branding. I was on my phone scrolling through shorts and kept seeing clips going viral through podcasts, wow. which gave me an idea. Firstly, we need to brand the channel. For example, this channel here, as you can see the Joe Rogan clip. <laughs> And if you go for your niche, so say we're doing Cristiano Ronaldo shorts, you can definitely take example from other people. So this account here, Ronaldo shooting, 8.3 million views. You can literally copy these kind of videos and get so many views for yourself. It's very Oh, well, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do
My audience is Joe Rogan viewers. Primarily, Joe Riding clips would go viral. So I went to this website called Oprah's Pro. This website shows one long video, 10 viral clips. This will select the best parts of the podcast or video, subtitle it and add emojis, and also face track. I found clips that could go viral on Joe Rogan, so I got it. Enter it and press one click. Once generated, it provides the most viral clips for you. For example, as, as, as a country, we take a very sort of targeted approach. Development. Very sort of scorching. It cut out the pores in the added good. I also hit the game. I have so much to Rogan. Watch out this game. For a title on Opus, on every single clip, it shows you a title that you can use. Discover how you can be sabotaging your child's success. Secrets of Downtown LA, shocking reality revealed. So take these titles and use them on the clips. For hashtags, I asked ChatGPT, best hashtags to use for YouTube Shorts on Joe Rogan. For hashtags, you don't want to overload it. So I'm use the first three. Interesting. No so hashtags ain't gonna make you do viral, but I believe you should definitely put them. Now for the description. This is for SEO, search engine optimization. This is how you're gonna get your search. Plus, it might recommend them to the right short viewers as well. So I went on ChatGPT and typed YouTube Shorts description for a Joe Rogan podcast. The description should be written so that it hits the algorithm for search engine optimization. I told you this. Also, add the keywords in the description. These keywords are important so YouTube knows what to recommend it to. And if we press enter, ChatGPT should be a good option. Now I'm gonna just gonna copy this little short intro and throw it straight into my description and press save. Now if you don't want to type this out every video, a little tip to upload default, you can upload the description that one ever. So you can have the description like that tags you want to descriptions I read the channel a few days ago and see what it does. Already on a brand new shorts channel, I've already got a 1 out of 10 on YouTube. As you can see, I've got 1.5k views, high watch time on a 40 second video. Now, I did no editing. To get 100% watch time on a 40 second video is huge. I got 12 subscribers as well and got over 3,000 views just from five videos or so, as you can see here. One of the videos popped off and overnight it's gone to mad mode. We've got another video which has done really well as well. For channel. guys, you'll be able to get hundreds of subscribers, a bunch of comments as you can see, and a new community. So I highly recommend you get on this now before anyone else so you can grind out YouTube as much as you can. Good luck to you in the future. Maybe you have a channel, and maybe you'll come back and tell me you have a super successful channel. Goodbye. When you write, your tone influences how we Did you know that you're supposed to be getting 10 to 50 subscribers for every thousand views that you're getting right now on YouTube, aka you should be getting 1 to 5% of your audience to actually subscribe to your channel. And if you're not, one, you might have the wrong settings set up, or two, you might be saying the wrong things in your content. Literally just went from struggling to on YouTube to get over 300,000 subscribers in just a few months simply by changing the settings I'm going to share with you in this video. That's not the most impressive part. What's even more impressive is these subscribers actually watch both his shorts content and his long form content. And if you want the same thing for your channel, I need you to smash that subscribe button because if you want to grow quicker on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, I need you to like how the YouTube algorithm works, the best time to post, the best hashtags to use, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Go to that pinned comment below and get into it right now.
Now, the first setting that you need to make sure that you're using is going to be an auto subscribe link. You're going to be able to put this auto subscribe link in your comments, in your description, in your video if you have a clickable card, or you could even put it just anywhere on your channel on YouTube. And this is so here's what you need to do if you want to create. You need to go to intendi.com, aka the link that is shown right here. And then from here, all you're going to do is take your channel URL, you're going to type it in there, you're going to click generate, and boom, it is going to make that auto subscribe link for you. And essentially what this does is when somebody clicks on that link, it's automatically increase the odds that people end up subscribing because otherwise they have to go to your channel and then find a subscribe button instead of being prompted to subscribe to you. But that's not the only setting you need to make sure that you're using because this next one might actually be a reason that you're losing subscribers right now and I see